Howdy, folks. Howdy. <laughs> I'm Black Dragon, and welcome to another edition of Black Dragon Biker TV. Tonight is the Black Dragon's uh, um, uh, roundtable, where we discuss issues with people from all over the country. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about the realities of brotherhood in the motorcycle club, both good and bad. Uh, you're welcome to uh, holler in, uh, send us your questions. I have a distinguished panel tonight. I am so glad to introduce them to you. Uh, for those of you that's your first time watching, I'm Black Dragon. This is Black Dragon Biker TV. We do Black Dragon Biker News uh, videos every single day, uh, Monday through Friday, about 10 -ish or so. And then uh, Sunday nights, the uh, roundtable, somewhere around 8 p.m., uh, and so we have uh, content uh, six days a week. So make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Today we have like an absolute treat, man. This uh, something you guys don't often get to see. First of all, we have our host, OG Weasel. OG Weasel, what's up, man? Yo, what's good, bro? What's good? How's everything, man? Everything is good. And uh, we have uh, several presidents from the mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation. So I want to introduce to you Vice President of the Topeka Chapter up to the left-hand corner, Brother Goose. What's up, Goose? Honor and respect, all. Honor and respect. And then I want to introduce uh, to your left under Goose is President Devil of the Frederick, Maryland Chapter. What's up, Prez? G'day, brother. Everything's good. Honor and respect. He's got that uh, uh, accent from uh, Australia. We have an Aussie <laughs> in our group. So who can actually wear his colors because we can do that in the United States still. I don't know how long we'll be able to do that. And then we have the East Coast Regional President and the President of the Pensacola Chapter and the original seven President of the Atlanta Chapter, the original seven President of the Ronan Chapter, the original seven President of the Pensacola Chapter, 0007, uh, is our brother Old School, who we have been doing this together for <laughs> how long, Old School? Almost 20 years or something, huh? Welcome yeah, to the yeah, show. Uh, I'm still going. So, uh, 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 in about 2008, I came to old school. Uh, we had known each other for about almost about about 10 years, maybe, on uh, the biker set. Uh, he and I used to uh, have a channel uh, channels where uh, he would do all these pictures, like uh, videos, like Girls Gone Bad. Uh, and down in uh, like bike week and stuff and remember those videos and I would do those videos and that's how we kind of met we were both photographers and and yeah. uh, we did magazines and we and uh, he had a studio called Red Rain and uh, I had a studio bunch publishing and we were doing the same kind of stuff and uh, I came to him one day and I said hey listen man uh, you still got that motorcycle uh, he had a Honda something 750 or something and, uh, CB 750. Yep. CB 750. And uh, this thing was old. This this motorcycle was ancient. And I said, uh, "Hey man, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Black Sabbath and make it a coast to coast motorcycle club. I want to know if uh, if you still got that bike. I want you to be part of the original uh, seven brothers that we're gonna use to to restart this thing." And old school says, "Oh man, I I sold that bike. It's on Craigslist. That bike is gone." And I said. Do you, I mean, you've sold it already. He goes, no, but I, I got it up for sale. And I said, old school, man, you can't sell that bike. And I started begging him. And he was like, man, I, I'm not going to keep that old bike. And I told him, I promised him. I said, old school, if you keep that motorcycle, I promise you, we are going to start together a motorcycle club that it's, I mean, we, it's already up. The motorcycle already, club is already like 30 years old, but we are going to take this motorcycle club and we are going to take it international from coast to coast. And uh, if you just, brother, I need you. Please don't sell that bike. And I must have, I was talking to him today. I must have oversold. I mean, I sold the dream hard. I had him feeling like, man, I better, I better stay. And uh, now, you know, all these years later, man, look at us, man. Look at us. Look at what, look at what you've done, man. Uh, together. Yeah. We've gone out. We've got clubs in Maryland and uh, Virginia. I mean, all the way over to uh, Maryland, Washington, wherever that is, wherever those guys are up there, 
all the way across the country. <laughs> and I just want to announce a new club uh, and give honor and respect to a new chapter, our Des Moines, Iowa chapter. Is that right, Goose? Des Moines, Iowa? Yes, sir. Man, congratulations, Black Savage, for the Des Moines, Iowa chapter. Four and a half years that man worked on putting that together. Say again? Four and a half years he worked on putting that chapter together. Yeah, they think they think we do these overnight, man. <laughs> and I would uh, and Goose, Goose, you uh, had a lot to do with bringing that chapter on, and uh, the brothers in the uh, uh, in the Midwest, right? Um, I've you guys, you guys are doing so much now; it's hard for me to keep up. But I'm very excited. If you were bumping on that uh, uh, big bone to hear something, we don't hear you. I'd like to. Can you not hear me? Yes, we hear you now. Okay, all right. And uh, we'd like to welcome our host, uh, Big Bone, One Percenter. Big Bone, man, what's up? Uh, man, <laughs> what's going on, fellas? I li literally just walked in the door, like just a couple of minutes ago. It's been no, working. I've been tracking you. I, I've been, I've been with him. He's been, he. See, I, and this is why I love you, brothers, because um, I've been messing with him. He's been, he's been flying all day. And I've been calling them up. I'm in the Atlanta airport. Are you going to make the show, man? That's, that's all I care. Are you going to make the show? <laughs> so I've been talking with him on his flight all the way down, and he literally yeah. just literally just walked in the door. So uh, tonight, brothers, I uh, I just it's so uh, I just got to tell you, whenever I have my Black Sabbath brothers on, um, I just feel I, I'm just so excited. Um, because I, you know, I we don't ever get to see you guys a whole lot. Now, I'm the guy who signed up to be a, a, a social media guy, and I know that's not you guys, um, Bailiwick. And uh, whenever I ask any one of you guys, you, oh man, I don't know. Okay, I get. So I'm just so excited to have you guys. I'm so pleased uh, to have you guys. It uh, makes me feel good. Do we have anything in Colorado? Yes, Colorado Springs Motor uh, Motor Hulk. We have. Uh, uh, chapter in Colorado Springs, uh, since you were asking. So, and uh, Peyton. And Peyton. Oh, yeah, that's right. And Peyton as well. Uh, hell, man. They uh, they have, uh, uh, we got so much going on. I can't even keep, any more, keep up anymore. But I wanted to talk about, uh, first of all, thank you, my club brothers, for coming. Thank you, uh, uh, Big Bone, for tra traveling all across <laughs> the country all day long. I know you're tired. Uh, so thank you for, for getting on. OG, uh, thank you, man. Uh, for, you know, I thank you for calling me first thing this morning. OG has gotten to the point now. He'll send me. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> we're not doing this at the last minute. So I appreciate and love you all. So, uh, good, bro. so I wanted to talk tonight about the tenants, not the tenants, but the realities of brotherhood in the MC and let people ask questions and things like that. And we just want to talk about brotherhood. And, and since this was OG Weasel's uh, uh, topic, I'll let him come on and uh, kind of explain what it was about. But we've already got a question from Jake Stewart. Have you all experienced a lot of racial tensions in a mixed race club? Seems to me there would be there would be just asking straight out. No disrespect intended. So why don't you tell them, brothers? Do we do we experience racial tension in the club? Not within our club. I haven't. No, no. Uh. Not, 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 not at all. Hard to believe, but no, we, we don't. Uh, that doesn't mean uh, we won't cuss a brother out or knock somebody out or something like that, but we don't. <laughs> it's never been we, uh, yeah. a racial thing. No. Uh, I've, uh, we, we've, we've seen some right, racial, uh, well, I'd say tension, but, you know, the effects of racism. It, it's foreign to me, you know, I'm from Australia, so. We don't have the history you guys have got here. So to me, it's completely foreign. I just don't uh, understand it. But I've started to see it quite a bit with my brothers uh, from other people uh, outside of our club. Um, right. you know, quite a lot. But nothing within the club. I mean, we're brothers. That's mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, go ahead, OG Weasel. Take over and uh, <laughs> introduce the subject and, and, and take us in the direction we need to head. Hey, Bone, I think he just threw me under the bus, <laughs> but it's all good. <laughs> but, uh, you know, every, every week, you know, when, when, we re when we talk to each other, Dragon, and I think about, like, the different things that the set needs to hear and what brothers need to hear in clubs, especially the leadership of the different clubs, you know. And I have to be honest, you know, being around this so long, 
you know, the one word that we constantly hear over and over is brotherhood, brotherhood, brotherhood. And this is probably the most abused word on, on the set today. So I thought, you know what, man, let's let's chop it up on the topic and let's just get a, you know, a true discussion going on about, you know, brotherhood, what's associated with it. Because this is kind of like this is one of those words that, you know, it's easy to say. And we say a lot of these slick words, you know, on the set and these different lingos. But, you know, do we really understand, you know, what brotherhood stands for? Are we really living it? Do we kind of, you know, embrace the idea of it? Because, you know, if, if if you've really been in this, you know, it's easy to get caught up in the, in the self-validation and the me, me, me factor. Mm -hmm. And when you start to talk about brotherhood, you have to exclude that me factor out of it and start <clears throat> thinking about that next brother. So I thought it would be a good thing to kind of, you know, um, you know, to, to speak to it, to speak to about what it means to you. So since we have some prejudice on here, I guess we can start, you know, kind of walk around the room. And the first question I would ask is what does brotherhood mean to you? So we'll throw it up to Goose on the top left. What does brotherhood mean to you, Brother Goose? Honor and respect. Um, being there. Um, not you don't necessarily have to talk every day, but when they need you, you're there for them. You get on your bike and you travel a thousand miles overnight because his wife had a baby and it's rough on them. Um, somebody passes away, you get on your bike on your own dime and you go all the way to New Orleans because those people are hurting. You're not going to like and be friends and be brothers with everybody in your club or your chapter. But you still have to work with them and respect them. It's a fine line for me because I'm kind of a real guy sometimes. And people ask me questions and they don't necessarily like my answers. So I get a lot of heat from people and brothers over that. There's guys in my club I would kill for and I would take a bullet for. There's other guys I don't want to talk to if I don't have to. It's just the way it is. That's how I see it. I yield. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your brother, Devil. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, uh, it's an interesting question because, uh, um, you know, I think brotherhood is more uh, shown in actions than it is able to be explained in words. So, uh, you know, I can give you some examples just recently, uh, or today, in fact, you know, my, my, we're setting up a brand new cigar lounge and uh, we're, we're actually selling our house and moving to that same building. We've got an apartment above it. And you've got a 20 something foot truck here at my house today that, that needed to be loaded up and unloaded at the, at the lounge. And I had, you know, four or five brothers turn up to help me do it. And some had to work that day, but uh, they still dropped by to, come give us a hand to do whatever they could do. Um, you know, one of our brothers um, decided he was going to race off and buy a new bike the other day. It's, a, it's a, an hour away in Baltimore and uh, five of us got onto bikes and made sure his first ride on his bike was with his brothers. Uh, you know, I've got uh, a brother that's going through a split up at the moment and he's staying in another brother's home. Just, just there's a bed here, bro. You know, so, it, you know, I think brotherhood is where you can really rely on people around you that, uh, uh, to know that they've got your, got your back, uh, they're there for you, and they display it with action. It's not just words. Right. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Um, Brother Old School, uh, president of the Pensacola chapter and uh, uh, Re East Coast Regional uh, president, what say ye? Uh, for me, like I said, it's a great question. First of all, I respect everybody on the, on the call tonight. And a lot of times like brotherhood is tossed around kind of like the word love and people, oh, I love you, man, or this or that. But ultimately it comes down to your actions and within the MC, in my opinion, true brotherhood comes with, uh, an, an accountability when you are accountable to your brothers and and, and what that leads into is like a responsibility, like you're responsible, like you kind of, you know, you, they have, you guys have each other's backs, which is like, and that's the kind of further, um, further empowered through trustworthiness. And you build that through like your honesty and being honest with your brothers and, and being honest with your brothers when they're, it was when they're right and when they're wrong. You know, when your brother's out of line and you don't check them, that's just as, that's just as bad as ignoring it so you you have to be uh like say you have to be honest with your brothers and i think that kind of develops your, your brotherhood it's like 
you have to be able to, and ultimately within the MC, you have to understand that it's always about riding the motorcycles. A lot of times when your brotherhood gets kind of stagnant or gets kind of funky, a lot of times you're not riding your bikes and you're arguing and talking about stuff that really is not essential to the MC, which is, like Dragon, like I say, moving the crowd. So, and you move the crowd, get on the bikes. A lot of times in, in, in Black Sabbath, search when we were starting out, the brotherhood was uh, lacking and because like, a lot of times we were in a place arguing and you know what we would do? And Jack gonna tell you, we would get on the bikes and try to ride it out like at least a tank of gas. It's hard to argue when you're side by side at 80 miles an hour. And usually whatever you are mad at, you can kind of get past. But ultimately to sum it up, accountability and that kind of leads into like a trustworthiness. So with that, you can kind of get rid of the foolishness that kind of builds up in some instances. I yield. I appreciate you, brother. How about you, uh, brother Bone? Hey, wait a minute, old school. What, what do you mean only 80 miles an hour? What, what, that's, <laughs> that's a damn lie. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, I I, look, I've seen Black Sabbath ride. So you tell me a bill of goods when you're talking about only 80 miles an hour. Come on now. I'm just saying. It's warming up at 80. Right, right. Exactly, man. Hey, I'll tell you, um, this is a, a perfect opportunity for me to share some what I call wise isms because uh, I have a brother named Wise and um, he, he didn't get that name by accident. Um, so we have these conversations pretty frequently uh, when we talk about the, um, you know, the cookie cutter expression, brotherhood, right? Um, because it, it, it's, and uh, you said it a minute ago, Weasel, man, it's, it's overused and, and it hurts, it literally hurts me because I hear uh, from a lot of different uh, communities on the set, a lot of different clubs, they throw around brotherhood like it's like the magical fix all. And a lot of these cats don't really appreciate it. They don't understand it. They don't live it. It's, it's not like brotherhood is a living, breathing thing. But good, getting back to the to the wiseism, uh, my brother wise, he has this uh, this saying. He goes, brotherhood is, and this is very true. I think uh, brotherhood is a burden. But it's a burden that you gladly accept because being a brother is not always easy. In fact, the definition of it, uh, the, the working when it's a, when you talk about brotherhood as a verb, right? It, that means you're doing something. A lot of times you're doing something at 3 a.m. that you'd rather not be doing when you could be at home, sleep, watching Netflix or, or doing, you know, whatever. Right. Um, so brotherhood is a burden, but it's a burden that you'll gladly accept. And if your brother is the right one then he accepts that burden as well. Now, along with that, the part two of that is there's uh, examples of brotherhood. So like, for example, um, Wise says that brotherhood looks like this. Like, what does brotherhood look like? He says, well, when you're in the clubhouse and you got 150 folks in there that is yelling, screaming, talking about this, that, and the other thing, when your brother, when your brother says, calls your name and says, I need you, you can hear through 150 so-and-sos in a crowded clubhouse or wherever you are, and you can distinguish his voice from all the other noise in that room because now it's important you heard him and you're coming. You're coming. You heard him because that's your brother. You're connected like that, and you have an obligation to your brother the same way he has an obligation to you. Again, going back to the brotherhood being a burden, but it, again, it's a burden that you gladly accept. Uh, uh, another step about uh, another thing that we talk about about brotherhood is brotherhood. What does brotherhood look like? Well, brotherhood looks like your brother has some sort of a come up, some sort of a some sort of a wonderful thing that happened to that brother. And if you're if you're genuinely his brother, you want just as good or better for him as it is for yourself. And when that genuinely, ha when you see something wonderful happen or when the world, however you want to slice and dice it, something great happens for your brother, you're legitimately happy for him, excited for him, sometimes even more so than he is for himself, because sometimes he doesn't even know about the, the, the gravity of the wonderful thing that happened to him because he's been grinding so hard to get a, to achieve a certain thing. Right. But when you see him achieve that and you're happy for him, and you're like, yeah, man, do that, do that. Right. Now, if you're lucky, he feels the same way. Now, we've all seen, unfortunately, um, just in our lives, you know, outside of the club or any of that, but we've all seen examples of you have a come up, something's going right for you in your life, 
uh, either in your MC career or maybe at some place where you punch in a clock or whatever, and someone who you thought was good with you is not really all that happy about what happened. And they wait for the first opportunity. Yeah, well, you know, he got that promotion, but uh, he probably got it because of such and such and such from someone who's supposed to be your brother. And I know a lot of folks, men and women alike, are familiar with that. A true brother, those sort of thoughts, feelings, and uh, ideal lot. Um, uh, the ideology of that level of hatred, I'll call it what it is, mm-hmm. that the ideology of that level of hatred does not exist for your brother. So those are just a few examples of some wiseisms that identify what we're talking about when we talk about real brotherhood. It's not just that catchy little catchphrase that everybody likes to throw out. A lot of civilians, uh, they have their own idea of what they think brotherhood is. And they're excited because they heard that the MC has that, right? They, the MC has this brotherhood. And what that means varies from what me and Dragon have this conversation all the time because he's a, a submariner. And uh, see, I didn't say submariner. I, I, said, I noticed that. You know, I was listening. <laughs> but uh, he's a submariner. I'm a Marine. So we have a very clear definition of what brotherhood means. There's a few words that people throw around honor, uh, honor, integrity. Loyalty, respect, brotherhood. These things are actual, these are nouns and verbs to us. But it's not that way for everybody. Now, if you're a person who understands what those things are, I mean, this is on some other other stuff. But if you understand and it means those, it means something specific to you, it's a noun and a verb to you, your job, in particular, y'all presidents, it's, it's your responsibility to identify and encourage those folks that have it encourage that way of thinking and don't let them get burned out by the negativity of those cats that that don't have it your job is like we say in my club hey if they ain't right run them to run them to off you know because what we want is those folks who are like-minded like that you know but anyway um how y'all say that that's my time i yield <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to really, I'm feel like uh, maxine waters and uh, i'm reclaiming my time no, that's that, my, I'm giving my time away, but you know. we, we say I yield in the black Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would like to say my idea of brotherhood is uh, I, I'd like to mirror what my brothers say. Uh, there's a few things. One is brotherhood is about support and support goes beyond the sitting at the hospital. So if if you if you support someone, uh, it's very easy to support someone when the lights are on, and the cameras are there, and everybody's at the hospital, and everybody's sitting around, and everybody's crying and stuff, and that brother goes home with one leg. Uh, the support comes in understanding. The brotherhood comes in understanding that support goes through the reconstruction period the multiple surgeries period, the rehabilitation period, rehabilitation period, the the coming back to the club, uh, the getting the person back on the motorcycle, the, the, the support goes all the way from the divorce all the way to getting a person through that. The support comes all the way from the beginning of, of, of uh, the, the problem or the issue all the way to hospice if necessary. So a lot of times we, uh, we, we lose out on the idea of the brotherhood because um, uh, uh, we, we, we don't understand what brotherhood takes. And uh, I want to announce a special guest, uh, Mike Ball from the Demons Row TV family. Mike, what's up? What's up, man? Welcome. What's going on, everybody? Much love and respect, everyone. So, uh, thanks for having Mike, me on the show. Uh, absolutely. Thanks for coming. Mike, uh, what is your uh, take on brotherhood? You, you happen to belong to uh, a pretty pretty big worldwide brotherhood yourself so yeah man uh the one thing that i would just express is for instance guys i'm sure that you guys have heard before but i lost my leg due to a drunk driver making a legal left turn and uh sliced my leg off at the scene and um here's the thing man what i've noticed about brotherhood is though we all came together for something as tragic as this um it shouldn't have to be as dramatic as that. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it, it should never have to be the point where someone loses their leg or someone gets, you know, traumatically hurt. It should be like, hey, that brother's going through divorce. You know what I mean? Let, 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 let me call and tap in with him and see how he's doing. You know what I mean? Um, silence is really the true language of brotherhood. If someone's silent, we read that. You know what I mean? And so that's a different level of brotherhood that just people just haven't understood yet, whether they just haven't lived that life or uh, they haven't had that connection before. Right, right. Um, so that was around the table. Okay, give us our next one. Uh, well, OG. You know, before before we even step onto the next one, I just want to revisit some words that Bone had said. And these, what I want people to do is really like walk away with a lot of key points from this conversation. Because what's going to happen is that we all going to have our own interpretation of what brotherhood represents. But Bone said something that was really important, and actually hit me. It was kind of um, he said brotherhood is a living, breathing thing. Now, if you understand what that means, you know that that means that you know that can change on you, that can die on you, that can resurface, that can grow. That's just something that you can't predict day to day. And a lot of us, man, we, we really don't take that word to heart. You know, it's easy to, like you said, old school. We, we like 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 love. You throw that word around, and we could throw words around endlessly. And that's the problem is that we're too quick to say stuff like "I love you" and "This is my brother." Let me tell you something, man. I don't do nothing without thought. If I don't mean it. I don't say it. And it's just, I'm not trying to be generic. So if you're going to be a brother, be a real brother to yourself first and understand what you're saying. You know, and part two of Bonehead said was that brotherhood is a burden. And some some people won't get that. Like if you're in a club and you patched up, listen, before you even cross over to, for being a prospect, you got to understand what, what you're prospecting to do, which is to become a brother. And that's basically the commitment to the next man. And yep. you, being a, you, net, you being able to be a man and extract the me factor out of what's going on in that situation. A lot of us really don't know what it means to be unselfish. You know, when, when your brother's and y'all going to a mandatory and he don't have that hotel money, it's quick to say, all right, man, I'll catch you in the next one. But how, mon- how many of us really would say, you know what? Whatever it takes, brothers, come on, I got you. I got you. We, 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 we yep. say that, but it, it's just not happening. So what we're doing in our own way, some of us are living like these, these false these false beliefs and brotherhood, but we don't really live it beyond the word itself. So what I want people to do is think about the word and say to myself, what can I do to enhance that word in my own life? And what can I bring to the club? What can I bring to the next brother? Like there's a lot associated with it. You know, what's funny, like, and I'm going to take this back like to the old school is that, you know, we would have brothers sometimes, man, I would get together with some bros and be it with the same patch or a different patch. We were just bros on some biker stuff. And if that brother came over and kissed me or vice versa, like that was the ultimate level of respect. And we don't, I don't see it like I used to. You see it ever so often, but that kiss on the cheek or whatever it may be, or that extended hug, man, like that means something. And what that says to me is like, listen, you know what? I've done something in this brother's life and vice versa that he has that compassion for me in that way. And that's the biggest regard you can give to the next man is to open yourself up and forget all that gay stuff that people may say. That's just an honor thing that we're giving to each other. So we have to really, like, really slow down yeah. and what we're doing and all the parties and this and that. You know, I always say one thing is that you got to be a brother behind the clubhouse. You know, I'm in a few different organizations and I, I realized that, you know what, that when we sit at the table and we're doing these different things and we all have, having a good time, what's more important is that when we part, you know, so what I want to ask, I guess the next question is, what are you doing in your situation to maintain your brotherhood? Okay. Right on. Uh, right on. Uh, and before, before we go there for just one second, I do also want to bring light to what Mike Ball said. Uh, and that is, and, and I, I just thought it was poignant. And that is brotherhood doesn't require all that. You know, brotherhood is sometimes the small things, uh, the quiet things, the silent things, uh, the, the, the day to day interaction. Like they say, true love is boring. True brotherhood is boring. Any of us can step, you know, anyone can pull somebody out of a fire. But to be there on a day to day basis is a, a major yeah. thing as well. OK, yeah. what's that next question then, uh, sir? It was mainly what are you doing in your own nation patch to maintain the brotherhood as leaders we have leaders and then we have you know some diamonds on here so you know maybe you can speak to that we'll start with, walk uh, away with some words we'll start with mr ball oh i accidentally unmuted myself 
Um, all right. So the things that I do is I just maintain relationships. You know, that's one of my biggest things is as someone that would be labeled as like something like as a communications director um, before is something that is international, just being able to talk and being able to even discuss things uh, in different languages. You know, uh, I dealt with 15 different countries at once. So dealing with that, uh, you have to deal with a lot of different languages, the language barriers, learning their slang. There's a whole bunch to it. It's just uh, nurturing uh, those relationships, I would say, is is what I would do the most. All right, cool. Uh, we'll go now to Brother Goose, VP out there in, in uh, Topeka, Black Sabbath. I'm thinking on this because I'm learning a lot right now. I'm a lot newer to the set than these other cats that are representing right now. Um, picking up the phone and just saying, Hey, are you okay? You know, what's going on? You need anything? You know, I, I got on my bike and I rode to go meet brothers that I've spoken on the phone for two years and I never met them in person. So I got on the bike and I went to them. Um, that kind of thing. Like, just be there. Let them know you're there. If they don't need anything, that's cool. Just let them know you're there. If they do be there for them, you know what I mean? And I realized lately I haven't been a real good brother to some of my brothers. And I understand that we're learning every day. You're never stop prospecting just because you wear a VP tab or a P tab. That don't make me no different than this dude right here. That don't wear any tabs. That's 100% correct. Once a prospect, always a prospect. Mm -hmm. always. And I yeah. learned, I've been very humbled. Um, through my interactions with Black Dragon and my other mentors. My mentors have always been nationals or regionals. Those are the guys that took me under their wing. So I saw shit from a little bit different uh, optics. I don't know. And I'm understanding a lot different now, like interacting with Devil down in New Orleans, interacting with old school. I've seen him two or three times now. When we went down to Big Bones neighborhood in Orlando, Central Florida, me and old school talked like we known each other 40 years. That's brotherhood to me. I've only met the dude in person two times before that. But we got on like, how's your wife? How's your wife? You know what I mean? That's brotherhood to me. I yield. Uh, brother old school, uh, what, what are you doing to maintain and uphold your brotherhood? Uh, for me, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, like for me, it's about being proactive versus reactive. And like I say, you're always a prospect. I think sometimes people get the idea that when you get a, a certain position that you become a boss or you become this or that, and ultimately you become a bigger servant. And when you become a bigger servant, that means you got to put action behind it. And like the Goose and the others were saying, sometimes it's just as simple as a phone call, or whatever but ultimately you have to i guess learn how to listen to your intuition you can tell when your brothers are hurting and when they're in need and you have to learn how to listen to that and not sit on it like say i think someone said earlier about being silent and that's one of the worst things because then you end up being reactive oh you know after the accident now we all show up but where were you before you know where were you why didn't you check his tire why did you make sure his bike was good why, why did it have to come to an accident or something tragic for us to come together and it shouldn't come to that. When you have your true brotherhood, like I said, you're being proactive versus reactive. And I think that's a lot of it. And, and, and also a brotherhood is not showing favoritism. I think one of the things that kind of ruins brotherhood is when you get kind of clicked up. And mm -hmm. when you see some people you like more than others, but ultimately the MC is, is about we. It's not about us or just these few folks. It's about we. And sometimes when you get that click stuff, you got to be the bigger brother to, to shut that down. Because if not, that cancer can just ruin a chapter. It can ruin, it can ruin a whole MC if you're not careful. So, with that, I you. I appreciate you, brother. Brother Devil, uh, same question to you, sir. Yes, yeah, so I think the question uh, that was asked was, uh, what are we doing as leaders, or how do you how do you keep that brotherhood going? And and I go back to the actions again. I think, you know, brotherhood, part of the problem with the term brother is that uh, it's so easy relatable to family. And, uh, you know, I don't consider relatives family. 
Um, my family are the people I choose. Uh, my relatives, I was just lucky or unlucky enough to be born, uh, at, you know, through that same bloodline. Um, so the brotherhood we're talking about is one you select, one you choose. And when you're talking about uh, uh, bringing that on in your, in your chapter, I think it, it comes to turning up. It comes to showing up. Um, it's, uh, it's about demonstrating them as actions. And it is actions. It's things that you do, not just things you say. So people can talk out their ass all day long and say, well, well you know, I'm, I'm his brother, or I'm a good brother or whatever, but they don't do anything. Like, you know, so it's about showing up. It's like I said before, it's, it's, it's actions that you take that uh, demonstrate the brotherhood. Um, you know that you can rely on these people because uh, they're there for you. So get out and ride, turn up to events. If somebody's having some issues, offer your hand. I mean, you've all said several um, times already that it's the same sort of thing. There's plenty of... Um, examples that we could throw out there but it uh, really comes down to a, a deeper relationship than you have with other people thank you sir appreciate you sir uh 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 brother big bone hey man you know i was thinking about this as uh as the question was posed and um actually devil you kind of touched on it a little bit actually a couple of y'all did so this past weekend um stand by this thing's too loud but um this past weekend uh i was in uh minneapolis or, wait not minneapolis um my not yeah i was in mine well i was in minneapolis too but uh but while i was in my not i was leaving uh, i was getting ready to go to this um this get together with uh with uh actually uh I, ice cold riders had their 12th anniversary so i was going to that and um so check this so i flew in on an airplane to my not and when i tell you these, I don't have the words for the kind of love and loyalty and brotherhood that these cats showed me. And there was a lot of clubs there. You know, I got there. I had never been able to, to pound the ground all over the Dakotas, but they had a bike waiting for me, you know. And that, that was a cool thing, and I appreciated it. And, um, you know, so that was something special. But here's the thing. Um, when I'm leaving the hotel at one point, it was uh, another club that was out there, and they're like, "Oh, you know, big bone, yeah, yeah. you know, what's going on?" And you know, we just outside, just bikers, just chopping it up about it, stuff. And um, the road captain said, and uh, I think this is what uh, what uh, one of y'all brothers just mentioned a little while ago about, "Hey, before that accident happens, what about the tire?" So the road captain made this statement. He says, "He says, hey, he goes, who's ready to ride? Who needs gas." And a bunch of them, oh, I need gas and da da da, and um, and then the conversation went to as to uh, uh, the road captain, some other guys. Well, there's a gas station here. There's a gas station here. This, that, another thing. But we better hurry up and do that because kickstands up was at uh, 20 minutes ago or whatever it was. And and I'm listening. You know, I'm looking at this through the eyes of a one percenter, understanding that these guys weren't. And uh, so I say to the road, I made a joke. I said, oh, wow. I said, y'all do stuff different. He said, what do you mean? I said, look, man, I said, I'm not trying to get in your business. He says, no, he says, you're here to, you know, like coach us up a little something. You know, we want the knowledge. I said, okay, so here's how that works. I said, if you are, I said, if you are the road captain and you're responsible for your brothers and your brother to your brothers, there's a few things that you want to address. I said, first of all, I said, I said did you do your... I said, did you do your inspection? We talked about inspecting. What are you talking about? I said, well, look, I said, one of those guys got a slick tire. He goes out, you know, while y'all are riding together. Who's he taking with him? If you love your brothers, you're going to make sure that every single one of them, before they get on those two wheels, that that vehicle is safe. I said, the other thing is, God forbid something kicks off. I said, and I get it. I said, y'all are a different sort of club. But what we do, and every chapter is different, every club is different. I said, but hey, when we say it's KSU and it's time to roll, you better have a full tank of gas because we might need to go 150 miles right now. So this, you know, I need gas, I need gas, I need gas. Sounds like a very little thing. But if you got to go, you got to go. And respect your brothers by making sure that you're prepared. It's a small thing. It's one of those, one of those, you know, it might be a pain in the butt. But guess what? You do it not because of the fact that you felt like you was good to go or 
Uh, if I need gas, I'll just stop. When you do that, you're inconveniencing your brothers. Right. All of them. Right. You know, so you have to think about stuff like that. And um, so I shared a few things like, hey, look, and uh, I even told him, I'll be honest with you. I told him, I said, hey, look, when when somebody raises their hand to get gas, that I need gas, I told him, I said, I was expecting, oh, Lord, somebody's getting ready to get a fine. I wonder how much the fine is for not being ready to ride. <laughs> and and instead, they start talking about directions to the gas station. I was like, what? Do what now? I was confused. Uh -uh. Then, yeah, I was like, what in the world? I said, I said, it's $25, nothing? It's not, nothing? So y'all ain't peeling them back right now? He goes, no. So, you know, we gone, you know, did a bunch of stuff. A few hours later, that same dude came over to me, the road captain. He's like, hey, man, he says, I really felt what you said to me. I forgot all about it. I said, what are you talking about? He said, hey, that thing you said about, about you know, uh, about getting the gas and this, that, another thing, and I'm responsible. I'm like, yeah, man. I'm like, that's your job. I'm like, road captain, dude, when you get on those two wheels, forget about your president, your VP, the sergeant at arms, or the man on the moon. I'm like, it's your responsibility. You are now responsible for every one of your brothers. And if you're not doing your thing right, you are failing your brothers. Right. Exactly. So you're about brotherhood. Do your job. Do right. your job. And uh, and he was like, I'm going to learn to do my job better. Go, keep getting at me. So, you know, I was I felt and just on a, a me, me, me thing. It did my heart good for that to happen because of the fact I'm like, OK, man, this is one of those situations where somebody's getting up. Somebody's listening. Somebody's getting a benefit for it. Uh, three years down the road, that chapter might be a better chapter because of something is what I call a small thing that I shared with this brother. But that was done. I shared it with him. One, out of confusion because I didn't understand what I heard. But two, out of brotherhood because, hey, man, you know, this this is to help you guys. You know, so, again, brotherhood is a burden. And like you just said, Weasel, it's not, it can't be that. Uh, oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. Uh, like you said, uh, doggone old school, this click stuff. Hey, you might like this guy better than that guy. And you might not want that dude to have a fine. You might not want to call him out for not having gas. But guess what? It's not about him. It's not about your homeboy. It's about everybody here. If the you principle. can't love, it's the principle of it. You know, you got to be. It's, it's, it's biker tip number one, to be honest. And and I had that very exact same thing happen to me. I showed up to my national president's house. Um, and this is by myself. You know, I, I show up and he's an hour and a half away from me. Uh, so I ride over there. And this is when I was, you know, I was a prospect. And uh, I was doing an errand and he, I showed up. And he goes, he looked at me and he goes, hey, kid, you got a, you got gas? And I go, no. He goes, don't ever fucking show up to my place again without gas. Damn right. That was it. That was it. And so ever since then, it's been like, all right, every single time I show up to anywhere, I'm going to show up with a full tank of gas. That's biker tip number one. Oh, yeah. Yo, let, let me speak to something real quick about the whole late thing. All right. I started this math about 20 years ago. Okay. The math is real simple. It was late equal left. That's it. If it's just me and one dude, it's late equal left because it's a disrespect. That's kind of off topic, but Bone touched on it, man. And that stuff like that, like those fines need to be imposed. And those are things that you need to invoke into those, you know, to those bylaws. Like, listen, address those things because it's a disrespect to your brother that made it you call your brother. And like you said, it's the little things like that can agitate the good brothers that's out there doing the right thing. So you definitely want to take those little things into account because that's when you start getting those little clicks, those little side clicks that old school was talking about. Then they'll start riding together because they don't want to deal with you because you never got gas so you're always late. So it's like, listen, man, like that's all part of naturing that relationship. You know, you have to understand those, those, little, those little pieces is what builds and what makes a brotherhood and makes you not like that next brother because he's always disrespecting you. And it's simple as simple as not having gas. To you, it may be minute, but the next brother, he's agitated. And he's like, listen, man, I take the time to get here on time. And then you can't extend that same consideration. So it's things like that, that as a brother- and Now we all got to stop because of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. We all gotta stop because hey, of you. Got you. You're better than everyone. You, you, you guys, you guys are killing me here. I was late on the weekend. Fifteen minutes late on the weekend because I had to fill up the gas. My sergeant at arms is blowing up my phone, going, "Big bone one percent just said I can find your ass." You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, what, what, what happened was, <laughs> hey, you know, I'll tell you a thing uh, in, in regard to that same thing. I got to, uh, you know, tell the truth. Shame the devil, as my mother used to say. I am notoriously, 
I say notoriously late for all kinds of stuff because I, I wear a lot of different hats. So a lot of times I'm getting ready to get to the next thing. But the last thing, you know, I'm doing like trying to get to my club for a thing, but I got a COC thing over here. And about that, amazingly, surprisingly, it irritates me. But my club understands because they're like, uh, because this brotherhood thing is about service. It really is about service. And uh, there's this old expression that says the higher the monkey climbs the tree, the more he shows his ass, which is just a fancy way of saying, that, hey, if you're doing stuff and you're working for your club, good brothers are going to appreciate it. They recognize it. Brothers who are on that, or, you know, you know, embracing that hateration and everything like that. Well, now, because you're doing a thing now, you're, you become an easy target. And the crazy thing about that is if you're doing a service for your club, you should never be a target. You should be loved, appreciated, respected. I'm not just talking about myself. I mean, in general. Right. Uh, the other thing uh, in regard to that whole ride thing, because uh, I know um, uh, Dagon um, uh, Ball said this a second ago, but um when that oh and we all got to stop because of you so you you know how like uh some clubs have like some guy on a, a sportster with a three gallon peanut tank right yeah and you got oh. somebody else the with, peanut tank man you, know, you got Everyone. the other dude with the five tank, you know. <laughs> Every oh. time, man. somebody you gotta, be one. Stop. Right. You gotta be one of them oh yeah somebody's somebody's bike is running perfect and getting 250 <laughs> miles to the tank and somebody else is getting about 80 right so <laughs> yeah. we say we say hey you you only travel as far as uh you travel as far as the smallest gas tank so right. if there's uh if there's, if you got a guy who's gonna get 70 matter of fact i'm gonna tell you so there's this dude <laughs> named zip tie um he, he's, i don't know if he, he listens frequently so uh but uh this dude zip tie destroyed it for everybody in his club uh he's with a a, a fantastic club uh, called black kings and um when he was a when he was a probie uh he his, his bike was a wreck and he showed up one day and uh, he earned the name zip tie he had a his exhaust was i kid you not he had a piece of fence post that he had cut down <laughs> had a uh a bunch of uh, JB Weld, if you know what that is, is you kind of mix it together, sort of like uh, silly funny, and um, a JB Weld, a fence post, and a exhaust from a 1972 uh, Volkswagen Beetle, and he had put that together, and that was his exhaust. His gas tank was messed up, so it was on the bike, but it didn't work at all. So he went to uh, to like uh, one of the auto parts store and got like a couple of little rigged up gas pumps, and under his seat he had two milk jugs that had gas in them and he could go x number of miles and then he'd have to stop and then he had to take the hose out of the one thing <laughs> and put it into the other one and he had he had stuff to do you know he had he was a, a probate a probie and guess what what he didn't do he didn't have not one excuse ever right this went all over the country running getting it in what he never said was well you know i got a problem with this i got a problem with that i got a problem with the other thing he he zip tied it to death and i remember before he crossed i said man i said you have just made life real hard for every probate that comes after you because there's not one excuse that anybody can come up with when you just went to alabama <laughs> you know stopping stopping every 40 miles to pull the hose out <laughs> right but um but again so what uh Oh, go ahead, go ahead. About that, I'll tell you real super quick. The thing about that is, is what we saw with this guy as a probate. He didn't change when he got a, when he became a full patch. And that's always a blessing to any club is that cause some some cats get patchitis. You know, they're the best brother in the world while they're trying to become a brother. Then they get that full patch and it's all about them. And they forget all of that all of that stuff, you know, like what they did to Back. earn that patch. We say all the time, it's way easier to get that patch than it ever is supposed to be to keep it. To keep you know? it. Yeah, and you got a lot of these cats, man, they get that full patch and brotherhood just becomes a, a anecdote. You know, it's not a noun, it's not a verb. But so you know. going to uh to that question, um that that uh the, the last question that um uh OG asked asked. Uh, what am I doing to keep uh, the brotherhood together? Uh, for me, it's leadership by example. I want to continue to show an example 
especially as I'm towards my retirement years in the club, that uh, I can still get down. And if the brothers see me still getting down, uh, or or the father who is uh, 74 years old still riding a Hayabusa, then it gives uh, some some uh, it gives them some 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 idea that this brotherhood thing lasts a lifetime. And one of the hardest things for me to do is stay in shape to ride. I just had a, a motorcycle uh, wreck, a little small accident, and it hurt so damn bad. And it was just an accident at six miles an hour. Like I'm ready to give up motorcycling. Like while I'm ahead, I'm I'm ready to get off, tow that sucker from now on. Hey, Black Dragon, where's your motorcycle? Out there on the trailer right there. Uh, but recently I had an opportunity to ride with uh, Brother Old School uh, and the Pensacola chapter uh, across Louisiana. And it was, it was my desire to drag those mofos across uh, 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 Louisiana as hard as I could. I got up at the front of the pack. They let me get in the front. I tried to drag them cats. I stretched that sucker out as hard as I could. And uh, uh, one of my brothers that I had trained as a prospect, um, he's riding next to me. This was a lion lock. He's blocking the traffic out. And uh, old school and them uh, are carrying. They, 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 they have their girls on the back. So I know I have an advantage. I'm trying to kill them uh, on that highway. So <laughs> old school pulls up to me and looks at me like, uh, uh, you know, we are carrying. <laughs> I was like, that's all right, bro. I'm fixing to ride you cats in the ground if I can. So uh, I, I love it because the young guys uh, are challenging and I'm trying my damnedest to stay in the saddle as hard and as long as I ever did. Uh, and we always push each other, man. And, and to me, that's a, a big part of the brotherhood, always challenging one another, always pushing each other and everybody striving hard to be, uh, to live up to what a brother would expect, the expectations of a brother. Yeah. Um, and I just want to take a second to talk about expectations for just one second. And this is something that happened to me when I was a kid. I was in second grade and they did a test in my school and they, they came up with this test and they told half of us that this test was going to be so terrible <laughs> and we couldn't pass it. And they told the other half, this test is going to be a hard test, but Every one of you guys can pass it. And I went home. And I told my mom about this test. And she said, oh, don't worry about it, son. You're very smart. No matter what the test is going to be, you're going to pass it. So almost everybody that they said was going to fail this test failed it. And everybody they said was going to pass this test passed it. And there were a few people like me who was in the I was in the failed section. But because my mother told me that she knew I was going to do great at it, I happened to excel at the test. So this taught me something about expectations. And in brotherhood, a lot of times your expectation of your brothers, the expectation you have can make them rise to be better than they ever could be before. With that, I yield the full OG weasel. We, we're not like our last eight to 10 minutes. So what's your <laughs> question? Just, you know, it's funny, man. Before, I guess let me touch this last thing. All right. Because this is kind of one of important one. And I kind of, it's kind of weird because we kind of ran through this out kind of quick. So that was a, that's a good thing. That means it's good dialogue. But, um, you know, the question I want to have, this, you don't have to answer this one yet, but I want you to think about what has more value. Is it the relationship or the patch? You know, and you're thinking about this for the greater good. Is it more so about your brother or the longevity of the club? And I'm saying this, so that's going to lead us to this last little piece I want to discuss is old school mentioned clicks. So what can you do to get rid of that poison. What are you doing to get rid of that poison in your club or if you're even addressing it? Because a lot of times, you know, we see it and as leaders or as brothers, we just, we, we dance around and we act like it's not there. But the thing is, that's going to be something that's going to potentially split your club or be the next club that's going to be starting next week. So what recommendation did you, would you suggest to the next brother to get rid of those clicks and to kind of, at the same time, still maintain the brotherhood? We'll go to you first, brother old school. Uh, what well, great question. I think uh, it has to do with the with balance of uh, knowing like we, everybody has bylaws. MCs, all, all MCs have bylaws. And we talk about like the spirit of the law and the letter of the law and that balance. Now, ultimately, clicks is like, is that go against the bylaws? Or what are they doing to the dereliction of duty type of thing? If they're getting it done, then you can go that route. But ultimately, it's, it's knowing that 
we got to look out for the, it's all about the patch to me. It's not about a few guys that you cool with. It has to be about the longevity of the MC and you can't have the click thing. So you have to be man enough to call your bros out, not only when it's a good time, but sometimes when it's uncomfortable. And, and that's when, that's what church is for. And that is your opportunity to get everything out in the open. Uh, no sidebar conversations. Uh, let's get it out in the open mm -hmm. amongst the weed. And with that, you can kind of knock, hopefully knock some of that down and just, or, and also in addition to that, get out and just really try to mix it up and just get these guys to mix it up and ride with different folks. Uh, be creative in that. Um, but you have to figure out ways to, to knock that down. And if they don't do right, they acting up. Like as somebody said early, they got to go. I mean, Hey man, the energy ain't, and most of the time they'll flame themselves out. So, mm -hmm. uh, but don't, when, when you see it happen, don't feed it and don't dance around it. You know in your heart of hearts when you need to say something. And that true brotherhood is when you say it versus being silent. You think you're helping them out by being silent and you're just hurting them. So if you feel it, say it. It might be uncomfortable, but they'll get over it. So I yield with that. Thank you, brother. Brother Devil, you're next. Yeah, thanks. I'm still thinking about that one. <clears throat> I... Uh... I think, uh, you know, clicks form, let me just get this right. So it clicks form because a group of a group within a group are seeing each other more often than the others, I think. So, and so that creates that, that stronger bond and that's where you get the click occurring. So I think it's important if you want to uh, quell those, those clicks, uh, you make sure that you and your brothers get out to see those that are not as active, you know, so every club's got some empty vests you know, make sure you get out and see them, those brothers. Make sure you travel out and see them. And even if they're not coming to see you from rides and what have you, take the time to get out there and be with them so that uh, the, the connection can always be uh, rejuvenated. And uh, and that, that I think, will help reduce some of those clicks. Um, when you go, we, you know, we've got a, a, a fairly big club and we go to these events. And, uh, yeah, you've always got... The, the people that you you see most often or you associate with most, and you're gonna you're gonna migrate to those people first. But make sure you take the time to get out and and see some of the other brothers that you haven't met before. Uh, we were in Louisiana at the the uh, memorial service that we had there, and you know the, the pink collar guys. Uh, we we roll over and say hi to the pink collar guys straight up because they, we've got a connection with them, right? But uh, you know, wander through the hotel and. Uh, with I, my son actually came out and we were sitting down to talk to my son. He lives in New Orleans and um, Chai Town's there. I've never met Chai Town before. He says, you know, there's seats over here. There's seats over here. Come sit down with us. And that's that, that's removing those clicks. It's getting to know each other. It's making sure that you're connecting with each other and taking that, making that effort to go out of your comfort zone to see some of the other guys that are that, that you might not know as well and spend time with them. You know, Goose said earlier on, you know, we've we've talked on uh, business calls. You know, we have our church calls and that. And uh, I, I think I can say he thought I was a pretty hard-ass guy uh, on um, uh, on those chats because I'm business, business, business. But when I got to have a drink with Goose and hang out and have a cigar and uh, hang out with him, that changed our relationship. Uh, so now when I see Goose, he's going to be one of the first guys I go over and say hi to again. So it's about that connection, making sure you're connecting with everybody and moving outside your own comfort zone. That's going to quell those clicks. Are you Outstanding. Thank you, brother. Brother Goose. I think one of the big issues is people are afraid to speak their mind and say stuff that's going to be uncomfortable a lot of times. You just got to put it out there. Don't bury, if you have an issue with somebody and you try to bury it, and think, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. Guess what? It probably is going to grow into a bigger <clears throat> issue. So try and deal with stuff before it gets out of hand so you don't have that issue. I think to an extent, the click thing is always going to happen because there's always going to be two, three, four guys that like to hang out more than these two, three, four guys. All you can do is when everybody's together, you operate like one unit, not two or three units. You go down the road, you all move across lanes at the same time. 
You go to the bar, you all talk to each other. And I agree with old school and devil. It's church. That's your time to talk on things. That's That time is sacred. Um, in our club, we do stuff a little bit different. So we have more opportunity to speak on things. Um, we're structured. Our officers are structured a little bit different than other MCs and one percenters. So we can talk to our P a little bit more relaxed than a one percenter could. Um, you just got to be there, be a unit, you know, one love, one black Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. One nation. All of us are on twos. It don't matter what patch you got on. If you're on the side of the road, I'm going to stop and see if you're okay. You know what I mean? It's bigger than just the chapter level with everything going on in the world right now. Everybody on two should come together as one big ass unit. All the little piddly shit really don't matter when they're dropping nukes on your head. Look at Ukraine. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But I yield with that. Appreciate you. Uh, Big Bone, sir. All right. So and let me jump in there. Goose, I got to come at you just a little bit. Not in a bad way. But um, I got to tell you, uh, and, and, you know, every club is different and like that. But the thing that I notice. Um, I can speak for, it's been my experience and this is the thing that, um, a lot of, in a lot of clubs they miss is that whether you're talking about the guy who got his patch 20 minutes ago, or you're talking about the lifer who got his patch 45 years ago, or you're talking about this chapter president or that VP or that whomever, right? The thing that, that we embrace, thank God, is that every brother, every bro, is supposed to be a brother. It doesn't matter what his title is. It doesn't matter. We're going to do stuff the same way. We're going to get down the same way. And of course, there, there's a certain, um, you know, uh, sometimes there's a certain hierarchy that kicks in about this, that, or the other thing. But we kind of believe that I'm not going to ask anybody to do anything that I can't do, won't do, or haven't done before, and won't do it again. Uh, so accessibility to people in the chain of command is a thing that that's a very real thing that happens all the time. It's not a, it's not like this, like this, like the, the wizard of Oz, the guy behind the curtain or whatever. That's, that's just not our experience. I've heard about that kind of stuff. It doesn't exist for us. Uh, we're, we're very blessed in that regard. And because of that reason, it allows us to, to move very effectively in a, in a lot of different ways. But the other thing I was going to say, and this is the part that's going to just could potentially piss everybody off because we've got a lot of presidents on here tonight. And I can tell you this, in regard to your question, OG Weasel, man, uh, the, the biggest thing is, as opposed to how do you fix those clicks and all like that, everything, every problem, every concern in the MC has got to start with you individually. In particular, if you are a president, you got to be real conscientious of how you address things or how you deal with folks. So as you're not contributing to creating those clicks. You have an issue with, with one brother because you feel like uh, he should have did this, he should have did that, he should should have did the other thing. Well, the way that you address that, when you address that, and how you address that, if you've got folks who, man, think that you just walk on water, then they may, in fact, assume there must be something wrong with this guy. Now I got to hate on this brother because my chapter president was angry with him about a thing. Now, a grown a grown-ass man is going to, you know, think about that differently. But remember, we're in a club environment. In a club environment, we're we're we have a tendency to embrace pack think about some things, not necessarily always the good things. You know, so my, I guess my answer to your question, OG Weasel, is that we charge ourselves first, whether you whether you are a chapter president or not. But especially if you're a chapter president, like you said a little while ago, Dragon, lead by example. Charge yourself, do what they call in a, in a what's that, uh, AA, do your own self-inventory. Check yourself to make sure that you are not adding to that way of thinking. And then when you see it, so now when you address, hey, we have an issue with this thing right here, you're doing it from, a, from the standpoint of being someone who you're beyond reproach because of the fact that you don't get down with all of that whole click stuff. You know, you don't act like you're walking on water because you're the chapter president. The best chapter presidents never wanted to be the damn chapter president. Think about that. You know? True indeed. True indeed. You never met these cats who 
who, you know, you meet them, you meet them 20 minutes in the club. I can't wait to be the chapter president and this, that, and another thing. And, you know, and they're going through great lengths. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Now vote for me. Right. And so them cats, man, they make the worst presidents because they're not wanting. It's not about service to them. It's not about being of a benefit to their chapter or to their nation. It's about what they get out of it, which is the exact opposite of what brotherhood is. You know, so. So, again, always look at yourself first. If you're hungry and thirsting for it because you need that title, you know, no, nah, you're, you're moving wrong already. But right. Anyway, I, 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 I check it out. I yield. <laughs> Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> brother Mike Ball. <laughs> brother Mike Ball. Well, to go with that responsibility, title is a responsibility. Like, I'm not sure where and why uh, that title somehow got to a me 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 factor like it's like i don't know like president's free is that the reason why people get into it i don't know um look man i agreed for zero power and that's that's what the interesting dynamic part of club life is you know you you have guys that are like that which are like guys would rather be a president of five people than be a member of a great nation like it does it blows my mind you know what i mean so for me, as old school said, he's correct. You know what I mean? You got to be verbal. You got to, if you have a problem, say something. You know, if you have a problem with that brother, don't talk to that guy about it. Talk to that brother about that problem. <clears throat> Facts. Simple. Facts. If, if, if you have a problem with that dude, don't go gossip to me about it because I'm not going to listen to it. I don't care what you got to say, it's irrelevant. You know what I mean? It's, I'm not in the picture. Go talk to him. <clears throat> you got to step like, in the a back lot chat. Of a lot of people like to talk, you know what I mean? A lot of people like to use fingers and not use thumbs, you know? Yeah. People got to take some accountability here. That's yeah. it. Uh, for me, uh, to answer the question, is it the patch or the brotherhood? I remember a mighty motorcycle club nation uh, named the Mongols. And the police figured if we take their colors, we're going to take their brotherhood. And there was a plan for that. And the plan was not going to be that the brotherhood dissolved because you, you took the patch. They had another plan. They was going to come out with something else. And they were still going to be who the hell they were. In my book, Prospects Bible, I talk about this one thing. The motorcycle club is about the people. A patch is the icon. Many motorcycle clubs have changed their patches over the year. In fact, most all of them. Uh, it started out with one patch, and then over the years, the patch has changed to become something else. So if the patch can change and become something else and that sort of thing, it's never going to be about the damn icon. Here's Do something that I want to say something real quick, and I don't mean to butt in. And I apologize for it, but it's, it's relevant to this topic. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's – you know, I, I – I actually paused up on that. You guys go ahead. You guys go ahead. Okay. I apologize. I, I want to reorganize that thought process before yeah. I spit it out. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, do yep. it all the time. You got to think so, about uh, it. It's, 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 it's never going to be about the icon. The United States of America's flag has changed several different times. You know, we started out with 13 stars and, and, and that sort of thing. And, and and uh, or however many stars it was, I don't want to say the number because I, I probably was wrong. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it was correct. Right. Right. on every little thing. Yep. You're, you're so right. so uh, uh, it it it's not about the icon. It's not about the past. And I say in the book Prospects Bible, if you learn to love the people, if you learn to love the brothers, if you learn to respect the people, the brother, the club, and what the club stands for, and the sisters of the club, and the club's mission, and the club statement, and the club culture, then you will love the club no matter what patch it's wearing. You will be for the MC. Patches and things can change. But and the that's, brotherhood that's never kind will. of what I was going to get at right there is, is, okay, I had a brother talk to me, and he goes, would you die for this patch? And I, and I honestly said no. I wouldn't die for that patch, but I would die for my freaking brother. Right. You know what I mean? And and, and, and I wanted to say that in a way that wasn't too weird, weird on that, but I want to make that clear. It's not about the patch. It's about that true, genuine brotherhood that you have. You know what I mean? Um, so 
I don't define my brotherhood by that. I define my brotherhood by something different, some at a different level, you know, and, and if people are stuck on the patch, then go ahead. You can go ahead and be stuck on that. That's just a different level. I just think at, at a different top tier level. You know, um, ball, I, and, I, and I feel you with, with what you're saying about that ball. And, and a moment ago, Dragon, you were you were you identified the difference between the patch and how patches have changed and like that and the 13 original stars. And, and I, I got that. Here's where I struggle with with some of that. And that's this. Um, I'm what they call a I'm a purist. I'm a, I've been called I've been called rather a purist or a traditionalist or, you know, I'm, I embrace the old school ideologies and traditions of this MC stuff. And we've all heard the stories about brothers fighting and dying over that patch. The patch really is symbolism. And, it, and you're correct. It does change. But it's symbolism for the brotherhood. You know, and everybody's got a symbol. Um, and when you mentioned uh, the United States flag, and you're correct, it was uh, those 13 original stars uh, identified the 13 original colonies, and, and later on they became states. Um, the thing that comes, and I'm in Florida, so let me just go ahead and piss off some folks again. Um, so here, uh, you know, uh, we've got a, a good number of folks who really love the Confederate flag. But what we call the, or what's commonly referred to as a Confederate flag is not actually the Confederate flag at all. It's the Confederate battle flag that was used to differentiate because the, the Union flag and the, the uh, flag of the con, uh, Confederate, the Southern Confederated States or whatever they were calling themselves uh, was so similar that on the battlefield, they couldn't differentiate one from the other. So the uh, Confederates um, made up this, uh, this, what they call the stars and bars, you know, the, 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 recognizable confederate flag now so that's actually what that was and even though they lost the war and that whole thing um that's this great icon of you know and don't even get me started on that bs but the the point is though is that what those guys still even though they lost the freaking war after a basically an insurrection and all this stuff you can't tell by some of these guys with the bumper stickers and the you know and waving them flags you know because it's a it's for them it's about something different than the piece of cloth. That's just a symbol. So do I love my patch? Absolutely. freaking uh, I can't even, I'll be honest with you. I couldn't even imagine being in another club, but that's because I'm at that point where I love my club. I love my brothers. I get offended when there's brothers. If I think a brother don't, you know, have that same exuberance that I do, it, it almost offends me. You know, but by the same token, I charge myself with trying to say, what, if anything, can I do better for that brother? Because brotherhood, again, brotherhood's a burden. I mean, it's a verb. You got to do something. It's a two way street. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> just to um, just to piggyback on what Ball was saying and to kind of go back also to uh, a comment that I made earlier. And I asked, I said, what was what has more value, the the patch or the relationship? And what you have to realize is that the patch basically is the gateway to the relationships. You know what I'm saying? So if you didn't have that patch, that relationship may have never come together. So those are things that, you know, we're all going to justify what's more important to us. You know what I'm saying? But at, yeah. even though the patch is the one that keeps us together, your identity is not necessarily in the patch. It's within the brotherhood. And like I said, we all going to just have our own way that we view this and we can, we can, you know, we can agree to disagree. Yeah. It's just how we approach it. We, we're going up the same, the same pyramid to get to the same point but right. um just to kind of i know i know we're way over dragon but what i wanted to do <laughs> yeah, <we are. laughs> I, I know you know how it is but you start chopping it up on these topics man but what i wanted to do i thought would be good is just to have everybody make a statement about brotherhood to kind of make one or two statements with the hopes that somebody would take something away as a kind of a uh you know some keynotes to bring back to their club so my statement would be was that let your bylaws be the true gateway to your club if you're, gover if you're governing your club like that's why you have bylaws because that helps you get rid of that those clicks and that trash. And if your bylaws are thorough, it's going to aid you in supporting why that brother shouldn't be there or what the problem is. It's going to help you address that and alleviate things in the future. Um, number two would be understand the importance of relationships in your club. Don't just be there for the sake of being there. Like, get to know your brothers. There's no need of me calling you brother, and I don't even know who, who the hell you are. Most people don't know people beyond they, their club name. Mm -hmm. You know, and not for nothing, like those are things that you need to listen. Like, I need to know your old lady. So when we need to do this run, she knows who I'm with. That's important. Those relationships 
will take you and help you do what you need to do within your club. And the last part, as leaders, think about why do people leave clubs? And if you have the answer to that, then you can be proactive and you can fix something before it's broke. So those are just my few things to um to contribute towards maintaining a good brotherhood and things that will help the longevity of your club. All right, appreciate you, Mike Ball. What are your two or three? Let's make I would a just say over. that allow yourself to be vulnerable with uh, your brothers. If you are sincerely brothers, allow yourself to be vulnerable and allow yourself to actually learn about them and not be so eager to talk about yourself. Um, be willing to listen, you know what I mean, and, and take in what they've got in too. They've got a story as well. Um, uh, everything has been pinpoint tonight, you know what I mean? You guys have nailed uh, brotherhood pretty much to a T, you know, and I, I love to see it. Um, like I said previously, man, it, it, there's 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 dramatic things that, that can cause brotherhood to bring you guys collectively together, and there's small things as well. But listen, it's a two-way street, and we got to treat each other as, as Black Dragon says, and this is something that I have taken home with me from a long time ago, is you got to treat each other like individual solid pieces of gold. And I don't know why we don't do that. Uh, we're so quick to gossip. We're so quick to jump on each other's throat. We're so go we're so willing to do that shit. Uh, I don't know where that, I don't know what kind of brotherhood that is. I don't understand that. You know what I mean? Because in my, in my opinion, if my brother wins, I win. So if my brother's losing, I'm losing. You know what I mean? So I don't understand why anybody would want a crab in a bucket theory of bringing each other down to bring each other up. I don't get it. But this is this is everything. Every single one of you guys have nailed fucking this topic to a T. And excuse my cursing, but man, absolutely nailed. And I'm I appreciate you guys having me on the show. Thank you for coming, man. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank so, you, guys. Mike Ball from the Demon's Row franchise. We appreciate having you, brother. Old school. Yep. yep. <clears throat> Once again, uh, great topic. Thanks for having me on. Uh, man, this has been awesome. Uh, just a couple of thoughts that pop into my head when doing with some of the other comments. Uh, to me, it seems like the patch is kind of like the, the tree that will allow the roots of brotherhood to grow. And it needs to be nurtured, it needs to be watered. You can't let it dry up. You know, you have to be mindful of that. Uh, but the patch allows for that foundation and it, it has to be treated with that type of respect and ultimately if you do that it, it, it can strengthen and become something that it just provides oxygen in this life for everyone so uh, that was one of the thoughts and we all it's like I say it's down to the individual pieces to go we have to break it down to the individual idea all the way up to the to the from the micro to the macro so to speak and uh to conclude i think a lot of times we get caught up in thinking of uh the, the issues uh we are, are it's like I say a lot of times we're not going to solve a problem with the same level of consciousness that created it. And what I'm getting at is I think a lot of times down from the individual level all the way up to the MCs, sometimes we we get to arguing with one another because we're not seeing the bigger picture. And what I'm getting at and I'll close is that, in my opinion, this world as we can see, there's a goose at Ukraine. There's so many issues we can talk about we can't go into right now. But ultimately, this is like to me, this is like the Titanic. And sometimes as individuals and as MCs, sometimes MCs get going at each other. And it's like we're arguing over the rights to rearrange the deck chair. You know, like we're losing the focus. I think to help with the brotherhood, let's start looking at the bigger picture of what we have going on. And we'll realize that we don't have time to be arguing about insubstantial stuff. Let, let's get on to something bigger and better. And with that, we'll see. We'll end up shaking off a lot of that negativity. So with that, uh, that's, that's all I have for you. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, thank you so much, brother. Peace, uh, brother Devil. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think show up, show up for your brothers, and uh, and and be there and uh, and support them. That's that's uh, the important part. And you know, uh, I don't know if what you thought I said tonight is real clever, but I probably sounded a bit cleverer than a uh, bit, bit cleverer than I, I, I normally would because I've had one of my brothers here on the phone. Hit me up with answers to these questions as well, giving me uh, giving me advice. So that's uh, my my uh, sergeant arms brother, uh, Big Cookie. And uh, if you want to know what he looks like, you can check him out on our YouTube channel. But uh, uh, I think that's that's a good example of what we're talking about. 
he knows I was coming on here with, with you guys and New Black Dragon. And so he's sitting back, probably smoking a cigar, and, uh, and he's hitting his phone up saying, yeah, what about this? What about that? What about this? And he's helping me look good here on YouTube. So, I mean, uh, support your brothers. Get in there and actually be a brother. Uh, be be a, 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 a brother who cares about uh, your other brothers. That's Which is uh, exactly what you do for me every day on the show. So absolutely appreciate you for that. And um, let's talk for just a minute about your various shows that you have. Um You've got um, Traveling Brother Cigars on YouTube. Uh, yeah, Traveling, you got- Traveling Bros Cigars on YouTube. And we've just started a, a Traveling Bros Motorcycle channel as well. Um, just talking motorcycle stuff, um, making fools of ourselves, uh, trying to fix motorcycles and, and that kind of thing. So yeah, it's just a bit of fun. It's good. But the Traveling Bros Cigars, that's our thing. There's been a few people in the chats asking me what I'm smoking tonight. Uh, if you want to want to check out um, our uh, our cigar reviews on YouTube, that'd be greatly appreciated. Like and subscribe. And uh, and also, you have a new uh, cigar shop you're opening up in Maryland. Where's that? Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, we're opening a, a brick and mortar store in Brunswick, Maryland. Uh, so we're we're busy fitting that all out at the moment, and our, uh, our website will be up real soon. If uh, if you want to order cigars from us, that'll be travelingbrocigars.com. So, but yeah, it's uh, it's all happening. Uh, actually, it takes me back to something I meant to say about uh, with uh, old school brought up earlier on. You know, being in, being in business now with one of my brothers, uh, things can get a bit, um, let's say, friction builds occasionally. We're out riding together and we're hanging out together and now we're working together as well. And uh, there's times where that... Uh, Brotherhood gets strained a little bit, and so we've come up with a safe word, uh, which is uh, time to ride. So we've decided when we can't uh, agree on anything, we're going to somebody pulls up uh, time to ride, and we don't talk about it again until we've gone for a nice ride at <clears throat> 80 miles an hour uh, <laughs> side by side. So um, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, it's it's all happening. It's very good. It's a good change in life, and, and we're really enjoying it. We appreciate you, man. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, Brother Goose, your final words? My outlook's a little different. Don't take your brothers for granted. They could disappear real quick. If you have an issue with somebody, squash it because they might not be there tomorrow to squash it tomorrow. Don't let them take you for granted. Um, You know, just be there for each other. It's really simple. At the end of the day, we spoke a lot of words tonight. But there's one word that all comes back to, respect. Give respect, get respect. And with that, I yield. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for always being there for me, Goose, from the very beginning. Absolutely appreciate you. Uh, so we got you, Bone. Man, you know you know, I talk a lot. Right? No. <laughs> um, but no, I'll tell you, um, the, the thing that keeps coming back to my on, on this topic is, you know, Brotherhood is a verb. It means you got to do something. You have to be actively conscientious of doing what's necessary to establish and to maintain good bonds of brotherhood and bonds of brotherhood. That, that, that means that that doesn't, it happens organically, but it happens as a result of someone making a conscientious decision that I'm going to do good or I'm going to do better in regard to being of service to my brother. Because you can like like uh, like your brother said, yeah, we, we spoke a lot of words, but at the end of the day, what are you doing? What what are you doing? If you if you're doing something, because actions do speak louder than words, and if and if nothing else is understood by the by the twenty pretty words that you say every now and again, or when there's been an accident, or you know you're in church and you're trying to look cool or whatever, forget all that. What are you doing to be a brother to your brothers? You know. Um, we say know your bros. That's that's the thing we say in my club. Know your bros. So if you know your bros, you know when he's going through it, and you know when he's doing great, and you know when he can in fact be of a benefit to another brother. It don't even have to be you. You know, just keep your eyes open and be ready to be a good brother to your brothers. You know, uh, was that uh, was it um, 
Uh, Barack Obama, I think, said that thing about be the change that you want to see in the world. Or be the change that you want to see in your club. If if your club's not already there, you know, it, it's, a, it's a work in progress. You know, it, new brothers come in, old brothers go out, keep working on it. It's a, it's a never ending, thankless job sometimes, but <laughs> brotherhood is a burden. So you got to work at it. Amen. All right. I think that's everybody. Did you have a final word or did we get you OG? I think I started it off. So I'm like, like bone said, I can talk all night, bro. <laughs> Especially when you're talking about this lifestyle. So yeah, I guess I'll yield too. Right. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's really cool. All right, man. So, uh, Mike Ball, we definitely appreciate you being on. Mike Ball is with the Demon Row franchise. You guys all know Demon Row TV. Check them out on YouTube. Uh, Big Bone has a new show coming up. Big Bone. Uh, cool. Let's see. Uh, Big Bone is going. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, Watch out. Here we go. Watch out for Big Bone's new podcast and YouTube show, The Big Bone Yard, coming soon. Uh, go over to Big The Big Bone Yard on YouTube and give him a like and a share and subscribe, and you will be able to uh, uh, check him out whenever he finally does his show. It's, it's coming. Uh, look, 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 working. <laughs> uh, Bone.outcast at gmail.com if you want to send him a question or something. And uh, He's also at Big Bone OFFO on Instagram. Uh, and uh, our brother, um, OG Weasel, has a channel. OG, where's your channel? Tell us about your channel, bro. Uh, actually, what I'm doing right now, man, I'm in a lot of different protocol groups and basically dropping you know, some nuggets along the way in different groups. Um, I haven't really focused on my own thing. I think that you know it's kind of good to spread out and kind of help different platforms. My pro my thing right now is to help everyone else out. And then probably down the line, you know, I'll sit back, you know, put the effort into and doing my own thing. But I'd rather just be a key player in a lot of different situations currently until, uh, you know, we uh, slow down and get things God organized. It takes, it takes time, it takes God time, man. It takes time. a key player over here, bro. I oh, man. <laughs> uh, we got uh, Brother Old School. He is Patriot X over on uh, TikTok. And uh, he's a uh, spoken word poet uh, kind of dude. And he his uh, um, uh, focus is on uh, debunking many of the uh, theories, talking about uh, uh, some of the, the New World Order stuff. And uh, and also he is a health freak. If you if you uh, he's a he's a 100 um, percent vegetarian uh, I seen him almost starve to death out here while we were all chewing down on a on the good old food at the barbecue. Oh boys, uh, eating uh, asparagus leaves. I don't know how he does it, but the uh, uh, Patriot X. You want to check out Patriot X? It's got the real like you know, uh, brother old school doesn't use words like understand. He uses words like overstand. You got to understand. I mean, excuse me. You got to overstand. This is a conscious brother, and if you're on the conscious vibe. Patriot X. I've got his book here somewhere. Patriot X. Um, his paperback that he he actually published his book before I published mine. What 2013 or so? Old school. Uh, tw uh, 2014. Yeah. 20 2014. He published his book right before I published mine. So Patriot X over on TikTok. You got to listen to his stuff, man. It's really really amazing. So all my bros are on here doing uh, big things. Big Bones got his thing. OG's doing his thing. Uh, uh, President Devil's doing his thing. Uh, old school over there. Our Patriots doing his thing. We're just all doing our things. Mike Ball and them over there doing their things. Look at this, man. Isn't this cool? All right. So I appreciate you guys. Good night to each and every one of you. Thanks for being on. This was an amazing show tonight. Bone, go get you some rest, man. You've been on the road all day. <laughs> I appreciate you. Um, uh, OG, man, thanks again. Million. Appreciate you. Much love. Brother Old School, uh, all the love, man. Uh, thanks for being with me in this phenomenal dream we've had that we dreamed up in uh, about 2008 or so. Uh, look at us now, bro. Look at us now. And you did that. Uh, uh, and I'm just so proud of you, man. Thank you. God bless you. Devil, man, love to have you, man. Yeah, you, 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 you keep me square. You're there with me every morning. I appreciate and love you. Thank you, man. Uh, 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 brother, brother goose, man. Love you. Uh, you, you are original. Uh, one of my original folks that has been following the, the show forever. And then 
became a member of the Black Sabbath Nation, the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation, and now you're a vice president of a damn chapter. So to go from subscriber to a vice president of the Topeka chapter, dude, proud of you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, man, everybody. So uh, you got to see some of my brothers tonight. And, uh, of course, we got to hang out with our host, OG Weasel, and our host, uh, Big Bone One Percenter. Uh, we're going to be doing more, man. We're going to be doing more. So make sure to hang out with us. Uh, check us out. That's my two cents. Love to hear your two cents in the comment section below. I'll be here tomorrow morning about uh, tennis. Thanks for tuning in. And get skinny. Prepare yourself to take the helm as president of your mighty motorcycle club by delving into the pages of Black Dragon's newest book, The President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership. There you will learn to advance your skills in applying the 14 scientific principles of leadership similar to those taught to officers in the United States Naval Service. Available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook. Get yours today on Amazon, Kindle, or order it at your local bookstore. Order your autographed copy from BlackDragonsGear.com. Be the best motorcycle club president you can be. Get the book. You are fake news. Black Dragon Bible News Network. Biker News you can trust. Biker news, you can trust. Biker news, you can trust. Biker news, you can trust.